welcome to a very special show and cover story. We have Punjab Deputy Chief Minister Sukhbir Badal and also his wife Harsimrit Kaur Badal, who is also, as you know, the Cabinet Minister for Food Processing. First of all, welcome, and this is, I think, the first time you both have appeared on TV. So Thank you. It's Thank a special you. one for us, for all of us, I think. Thank you. So I'll begin with you first, uh, Sukhbir. This is going to be a big election year, but before the elections, I want to talk to you about the other issue that's come up: demonetization. Had the Prime Minister consulted you on this, what no. would you have advised him? Uh, actually. Uh, Nobody was consulted. Actually, these things you don't consult because if you want to do, take such a bold step, hmm. the less people know about it, the, the better. better it is. But if it was consulted, would you have said good idea? Or no, it is a good now. idea, but only thing is if the availability of currency was available. Hmm. Actually, what is happening today, the currency, new notes are not available. The minute they are available, the problem will be solved. But the problem is the availability. You know, how much time is going to take? One month, two months, 15 days? It all depends on RBI. Yeah, so they should press in more, more of these uh, machines to print more notes. That's the only way we can solve this problem. Because your initial reaction was is unworkable. Have you changed your mind? I never said unworkable. I said it? it was a shock for people. Hmm. And it was a good shock because when you want to do something so drastic and if you want to fight against black money, this is the only way. But uh, we needed to uh, get our uh, background uh, uh, work done much better in terms of uh, printing notes and availability of money. Because hmm. that has uh, uh, hit the people more. And also, Harshimad, you know, the rural women are really hit hard. And I know you go out in the villages and you've done a lot of work for them. How are you going to explain this stand? It's going to be a very tough one for you to handle. Yeah, I think um, Indian nature of women, where even be it a Safai Wali or any of us, we have this habit of hoarding and saving a little bit from whatever spending money that we're given. Um, yes, there were quite a few incidents even in my constituency which came out in the newspaper how the husband was on the verge of committing suicide because of his debts and suddenly the wife came out with 20 lakh of rupees and he was ready to kill her. <laughs> so there were some humorous uh, angles to it. But yeah, it, it's hit everybody in some way or the other. But then when a country goes to war against anything, be it against your enemy or be it against a cancer like black money, of course it involves everybody and of course it affects everybody. Hmm. Uh, but Everybody understand that it's for the betterment of the nation and I, I think that's why despite the hardships he's getting the kind of the Honorable Prime Minister is getting the kind of support that he is getting. But you know despite the hardships the, the farmers are hit, the women at home you know it's especially in rural areas wouldn't you agree this it's hit more so how would you I mean would you I really give it your whole support? I think it's the hoarders of black money who are hit the most because overnight I mean there are certain political parties which came up on the anti-corruption platform and it's such a dichotomy to watch them now sitting in dharna mm. against uh, in favor of black money so the ones who have been hit the worst are the ones who hoarded the maximum black money and those are the ones making the maximum noise in parliament and outside parliament but like i said that it's hit somebody more it's hit somebody less the farmers anyway have white income so it's just a question of when they will have availability of cash um, be it the salaried class, their income is mostly in white. So their issue is also not having enough enough availability when they go to the bank to be able to have that. I think this Indian uh, psych, uh, mental psyche of having cash in your hands, which is what we're trying to yes. change. Like in the Western world, it's all plastic money and it's all digitized. It will take time to change that. And I think that's a step in the right direction. If you want to eliminate uh, black money, if you want to eliminate corruption, if you want to put an end to terrorism funding and all mm. these steps, these harsh steps had to be taken. And I think that's one of the reasons the Prime Minister is still getting the kind of support despite the hardships that he is getting from those very people who are facing the hardships. Well, you both will be the, your party will be the first to put the, you know, test the support that he's getting because Punjab elections are really the first. Before I come to you, one last question to you is also, women uh, hide money and save it from their husbands. Do you, did you also have a kitty that he didn't know about? Uh, I had also some, but hmm. luckily I think God was kind. A couple of months ago, there was a friend who was in need. So I lent all my savings uh, to her, so <laughs> which left me in this happy position of not having any savings that I had to divulge to him that I had saved. So he can happily think that I hadn't saved anything. <laughs> But will you have a tough time when you go campaigning? Because farmers, uh, you know, they do ready cash as we were talking about was... See, at this moment, uh, and farmers seeds. have already uh, sown their crop. In Punjab, but unlike other places, for the fresh we have another system of economy working. Which is? The Artiyas. Where a farmer, his relationship with him is like a family relationship. Hmm. He sells his crop to the Artiya, so he uh, credits his account. When he wants something, he goes to Artiya. He wants petrol or diesel, he'll uh, give a slip to the pump, the pump will give him. 
we want pesticide is give a slip to the uh, pesticide dealer so that system so that that system has been working and it was still working so it's like a credit card it's like a it's like a barter system a barter or a credit card hmm. so which is still working that has saved this, uh, that sowing although some states may not have such a system which is prevalent in punjab so we have saved from that so uh, initially but your reaction wasn't you know you were not very happy from what i could make out your initial reaction have you no i was i never said to I the prime minister happy. about no, it i never said i was unhappy i said you didn't look happy huh? now you are uh, looking a little happier no, maybe because, uh, implementation uh, <laughs> implement what basically issue was that initially there was a shortage of cash hmm. people was were desperate like today you see is a payday Huh. and there is a going to be problem for next few days correct so we'll have to take make arrangements for such uh, days and maybe we allow people to withdraw more cash actually problem is that there's no cash available with the banks hmm. so that's a, you may have a limit of 25000 but the cash is not available what can you do so it should have been planned better maybe the planned means, or implemented but better such a thing but such a thing planning huh. then the things leak out then the whole uh, purpose of the thing gets defeated and i think when you go into um any kind of mode any kind of war the strategy you put your strategy in place you plan the best that you can but what that moment throws up you have to improvise at that time to address that issue and hmm. which is which this government has been doing every day which the opposition takes it that they going on changing their stance is not changing their stance is as something is highlighted to them they try and find a way out of it and i think that's a responsive government and it's their job to do that they are doing that and i think it's unfortunate that if the opposition has some issues instead of making a racket outside and inside parliament you have been elected by the people to raise the problems that they are facing ask for a debate raise their issues put the government on the mat and take deadlines why are you running away from that so why is the government running away from debate is it not sure of its allies people like shiv sena may not vote uh, akali dal i don't know no government has asked that we are ready no, for we debate are with from the government. Day. you will vote yeah. in favor the yes, yes. they have asked for they have agreed to a debate from day one but you can't say we will only debate if prime minister is sitting there if so and so answers under so and so rule these hmm. are all you know tactics to divert the issue and not come to the core issue basically they have no issue because they ha- they know the people of the country are in favor of putting an end to black money and putting an end to corruption they are facing hardship that's what these guys should be raising but when the government gives those answers probably they will have nothing to go back and fan uh, <laughs> the people anymore so they want to make a racket out so i mean you look at the drama that is being done a person like rahul gandhi standing in queue for 4000 rupees i mean isn't that a joke so but kind of the message tactics. still went down that he is coming to meet the people you know yeah, he says he goes to meet a kalavati in a dalit house to eat food with her and then he doesn't even remember her name and the kalavati's history he catches a third class train and goes to a mandi in punjab now hmm. he stands in a queue these are photo op kind of politics what was he doing for the 10 years he was in power besides sleeping <laughs> okay back to punjab more than uh, rahul gandhi is the satluj jamuna canal that's become a big issue but prime minister comes to bhatinda addresses a rally doesn't raise that issue is he scared because he's bjp is in power in uh, haryana rajasthan he's you know is he fully you have you got his support see it is see as a uh, prime minister has to look at various other aspects hmm. i cannot uh, comment on his behalf but from our point of view we are very clear we have no water neither we can give any water nor we will allow any water to go But and I think government of India has taken a neutral stand, and the fact that in Bhatinda he raised where the the root of the problem, the Indus Water Treaty, where in any case we didn't get what our share was supposed to be. So mm. he's taken it to another level. If, if that treaty is addressed and we get some of that water, which anyway is getting wasted by flowing into Pakistan, there won't be any water issues for anybody. But so. the um, issue is that it's going to become an election issue. Saying that BJP says one thing in Haryana, one thing in Punjab. So how will you uh, explain That's the that? That's same thing for Congress. But the BJP is in power and in a position to do something. And up, besides the Kali, besides the Kali, besides the Kali, so we are the only people who are. That's what I keep telling uh-huh. the people of Punjab that today you have to decide that this battle which is fighting against three states, who is like the people of Punjab, which party has everything of theirs at stake only within the boundaries of Punjab. It's not the Congress. It's not the AAP. Hmm. It's nobody except for the Akali Dal. And that's why I think for the sake of a fight which is. Fought tooth and nail to achieve and to win. It's only the Akali Dal who can lead it, and Mr. Badal has been uh, in the forefront of this fight from the day Indira Gandhi came in to set, you know, to dig this S Y L canal and pass those orders. He's been opposing it since that very day. But then uh, Amrinder Singh has been saying that he actually uh, repealed the uh, Water Reorganisation Treaty in 2004. Uh, yeah, he repealed why? it, and his own government 
sent it for presidential reference. Actually, Amrinder Singh should have resigned there and then when his own government sent it for presidential. Instead of now. Uh, yeah, instead of now. Sir. And now also he's just resigned from the uh, from the Vidhan Sabha. He's not resigned from Congress party. <laughs> so, well, he's resigned from the Lok Sabha. Yeah. See, when what happens? He, he should resign from the Congress because Congress was a person, party which uh, uh, robbed the state of Punjab of water. Indira Gandhi robbed it. So you're part of the Congress which robbed it. And, you'd we, uh, well, and he was planning to fight uh, anyway Vidhan Sabha. Anyway, he said six months ago that he is going to fight Vidhan Sabha assembly elections. So anyway, he was going to resign. He's not attended parliament. It was, uh, I mean, he just... Well, I and as he says, my people. heart is in Punjab. So that's the image he's trying to give. But Amritsar is now empty. Do you think Sidhu will contest from there? He's most welcome. Who will you feel against him? Uh, that is BJP seat. Uh, BJP, will, BJP, BJP will take a decision on that. Will take a decision on that. But uh, Sidhu going to join the Congress is that a loss for you? No, I think the best thing which has happened to us as he won. You know, you have cancer, you you get it operated at the right time, hmm. and if you are given the cancer to them, so it will spread in their party. <laughs> we are moving on from Sidhu now. I recently saw you and Captain Amrinder sharing a stage, and there was a lot of talk between the two of you. How he uh, sent you diet coke in jail and all this. So is this some one army between the two of you and? The Amadni Party is a common enemy. You call everybody was calling him the lost cause, and there was a lot of. See what happens is, uh, first of all, he never sent me dad cooks. He that time, that, that, yeah, he got you in a cell, which is he put the me in a cell you be, you're where, going for where, yeah. where it was a de- they considered as a death cell, yeah. where I was made individually to sit. After that, the government of India, uh, those uh, a parliament committee, had to go and check where I was put. A six by eight foot cell. Yeah. Have you engraved his name in that cell? That is the, what one has heard. No, no, no not that. But uh, see, unfortunately, un- Mr. Badal, uh, senior Mr. Badal doesn't believe in vendetta politics. That was something started by Amrinder Singh, and hopefully saw it being buried with the exit of Amrinder Singh from Punjab for good as well. So no one army between the two of you. No. This was just. Uh, no, the, today we we are sitting in a, st- a stage together. It's a, a function which we have to. It's a. Like a show by NDTV, we have to be discussing things together. What we one saw was two of you more in sync, and AAP is really the outsider. So is there? Uh, yeah, because anyway, AAP is an outsider. No, AAP is an outsider, and, but uh, is it AAP, the, a bigger threat for you than the Congress? AAP is no threat. No threat. As I said today, that AAP is completely wiped out. Not more than seven percent, uh, seven seat or six seats will get. AAP will get. That's it. Mm. And uh, how much are you expecting the Congress to get? Congress not more than 35, 40. He is giving you 20 seats, so you are giving him a little more. He is dreaming. He is out uh, of touch. You know, basically he is completely out of touch of Punjab. He never comes to Punjab. And this also somebody is advisor might have wrote 20 seats or made us 20 seats. It's like the Congress culture. Rahul Gandhi gets a chit. He just goes and reads out that chit in Parliament. So now, but Captain is a bit more uh, rooted to the ground than Rahul. He won't need Prashant least... Kishore if he was rooted. He won't need a Prashant Kishore. I mean, we don't need one. Why does he need one? Because he is not rooted. His uh, counterpoint to that is that uh, Prashant Kishore is working in Punjab but not in UP for the Congress. He took the Congress contract but where he saw a sellable face and Prashant Kishore clearly sees uh, so Captain as winning ticket. So has Congress given up on UP? They have admitted their defeat there or is it that they wanted to get rid of Prashant Kishore so that they have better prospects? Uh, Amrinder Singh can answer that. I think so. Well, the subtext I think is pretty clear over there. But... Um, you know, the two of you together, also yeah, one last question on them is the uh, ca- Captain Amrinder Singh is now saying this is my last election. It is also Prakash Singh Badal's last election. So this is really the battle of the last election. Is that the emotion? That's my father happened? never said it's the last election. He's asked for 10 more years. He's asked for so 10 more years. This <laughs> is the people, so. old war house. So when is it your turn? I think uh, working under Mr. Badal is the best thing which is happening to the state and is best for the state. It's like education experience. Hmm. Like you have an excellent coach. The more you get under work under him, the better training you, better you perform. So it's good for me, and I have always said that as long as he's fit, he'll be a candidate. But also, have you in the last elections? I remember there was some talk how you know your father represents the old, the traditional values. You are supposed to be the new face, the young face. So what is this thing that you can you know take the party forward? So that's the best combination. So the we are taking care of two in one. So we, instead of the elected one, they've got two people. Two for the price of one. So we are covering both angles to it. But what are the things that you would do? Say something that your father has done that you would now think that it's time to shell that idea and move on. Or no, no. Actually, what happened? He uh, he's got his area work uh, carved out. I've got my area carved. I'm more into yes. infrastructure. 
I'm more into like rejuvenating the party. If you look at my candidates now, they're all youngsters hmm. who are coming, very well educated people. So keeping that in mind, I think the best combination was works very well. With the father's experience, his dedication, the faith that people have in him, 60, 70 years, he started as a sarpanch hmm. and he won every election and reached the position that he has. Look at the kind of experience and he's connected to the people even today. So it's whether it's the vision of the future, um, the aspirations of the youth, development of Punjab, that's uh, the freshness that he's brought in and being a border state with Pakistan, having these radicals active over there, this is the history and the experience that Balsab has brought in, which is why Punjab is one of the most peaceful states today. There you have all these jat agitations and gujar agitations and every other agitation happening all around us. Outside dangers coming in Punjab, the problem is that? We have, we have. It's the only state which have, has a 525 kilometer live border with Pakistan and Pakistan mm. has left no stone unturned to try and destabilize the country. So Punjab has always been in the forefront of bearing the brunt and fighting this and uh, stopping it from coming, whether it's narco-terrorism that they've tried mm. or whether it's to destabilize the uh, nation, whether it's um, terrorism, everything Punjab, the people of Punjab have fought it and resiliently bounced back despite the hardships that they faced. Now, Congress has raised allegations of your brother's nexus with uh, drugs, this thing. How would, uh, does that affect uh, your relationship if you have to, uh, you know, act against him or, or... See, what happens, they have no, uh, nothing against us. So this is, you come out with a frivolous allegation. Has anybody ever uh, got into it? Has he been uh, charged with it? Or has he been ever caught with it? Hmm. These are just opposition. Like yeah. you say something against Prime Minister Modi, hmm. or you say something against me. These are typical things which every party keeps so on saying. So he's a political leader? He's a statement. political, this is just a political statement. There's an accused who was interrogated by five central agencies hmm. and never said anything. He went to a magistrate maybe 10, 11, 12 times to uh, give his version. Never said anything. One fine day walking out from the court, he says a sentence to the media. Hmm. And that by the Congress is played up and hyped up to such an extent that Rahul Gandhi comes and says 70% of Punjabi youth are drug addicts. And which is such a sad state of affairs that to the, you know, I know that they brought, they brought in terrorism into Punjab for political gains. They did the 84 genocide to finish on to win a political battle. But imagine coming and defaming the entire youth of Punjab to win a political battle. I mean, you defame the brothers, you defame the, my family, you defame our party, but you can't just call 70% of Punjabis drug addicts to ensure that tomorrow no one what gives them jobs. What is the real and, figure? How many? How, how, I think uh, we just did a, a drug test just now. Uh, we have 4 lakh youth were tested hmm. and this how it was done was that uh, we had a police recruitment, hmm. 4 lakh people applied for it. Hmm. If we suddenly take, took a decision, then let's get them tested. Surprise test. Surprise test. So we got all of them, it took 2 months for us to complete the tests and, and only 1.26% out of 4 lakh, 5,000 people were tested positive. I'm going to take a short break and also, you know, I'm not going to waste this opportunity that I have. So when we come back, we're going to talk to them and also a bit about some personal questions, how their political life and their personal life works out. Welcome back to Cover Story. Well, we have both the Badals with us, so we are going to now talk to them about, you know, uh, I want actually to begin with you, Harsham. It's, uh, can you compare his uh, style of working with his father's? Not, you know, what they do, but their style, you know, as politicians. Uh, I think the father beats not just all of us, but everybody else, hollow where hard work is uh, concerned. At his age, whether it's 50 degrees of temperature outside or it's minus 2 degrees, mm -hmm. He is there in the villages covering 40, 30, 40, 45 villages and doing it for 15 days at a stretch. I think be it me or be it Subir, we can survive for a couple of days, but then we need a break. But I think that's his passion and uh, his love. And that's why for 70 years, beside, despite winning or losing, he's been on the ground there. Uh, Subir is a planner. He's uh, the amount of time dad spends on the ground mm -hmm. being rooted and connected to the ground. Subir has a vision and a very large vision i think something his father taught him at a very young age where he said that don't always compete with your opponents hmm. try and draw a line which is so high 
and then try and achieve that line. So you're way above them. And I think somewhere or the other, maybe what his father said had some effect because 10 years ago when there was 10, 12 hours of power cuts in mm. our state and he said, I'll make it surplus. Everyone laughed at him. Today we are a surplus, a power surplus state. Then just a few months back, he said that I'm going to create these roads in concrete, four-way, six-way express highway. I mean, the social media was flooded with all kinds of things. What is he dreaming? It's a reality today. So he's come up with a vision which is so much larger than life that others can't even connect to it. But he has delivered on that vision. So I often say that once he decides to do something, he achieves it. And most of the time, what he plans is so huge and... Um, so big that people somehow find it hard to believe most of the time. So wow. when he says that he's going to, you know, in the next five years, create 10 lakh employment opportunities for youth, hmm. I know the opponents are going to laugh at that also. But knowing the guy, he's got a track record of delivering and he will, whether it's the election or whether it's the jobs he'll deliver. So you have one vote for you at least over here. <laughs> but uh, how much would you give him as a deputy chief minister? Out of 10? Uh, well, if I give his father 10 on 10, I give him 9 on 10. You still have to work for that one point. <laughs> but uh, I remember uh, she, she was not very keen to join politics. It was uh, you who convinced her? Oh. No, actually no. it was Captain Amarinder Singh who convinced us. <laughs> no way. How did that happen? Because he came to our home constituency, hmm. put his son and challenged us. Right. Yeah. So we had no choice. But uh, how so do you see... That was the first election, which hmm. I thought I would never fight a second one. The second time round, Congress was even smarter. They huh. got hold of my brother-in-law and four parties united... Congress, PPP, the Communist, as well as Aam Admi, who's been hand in glove with Congress anyway, they unitedly fought an election against me. So second time around, again, I couldn't run away from that challenge. So I ended up fighting the second time. So, so would, you call us a, would you call her a reluctant politician? What would no, you call no, her? She's no more reluctant. She's more aggressive politician now. <laughs> more aggressive than you? Yeah. So who wins the battles at home? Always she. Would you agree to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, at home, that's the only place I can win it. I don't try it in public. So... <laughs> I can only aspire at home. <laughs> but I remember initially, one of our first interviews, I had uh, called you, you had called yourself the most talkative Badal. But I can see now, Sukhbir is uh, becoming more TV savvy. <laughs> oh, actually now, uh, the media has come more aggressive. Oh, media has been very nice to you. <laughs> no, no, they have been aggressive in the sense now, the media is multiplying. Hmm. So you can't cross any road without meeting them. So, you so now you have no choice. <laughs> so you're a reluctant TV star. <laughs> But in terms of politics, you know, uh, how do you see uh, the real problems of Punjab? You know, because how are you going to solve, say, the, uh, the problems of, the, say, the drug youth? There is actually, you know, everything can be solved. There's nothing impossible. You make up a mind, it can be done. Governments, uh, whoever have vision, can do it. Like I said, I'll make power, Punjab power surplus. I did it. Hmm. I said, I'll connect every town with four to six lane expressways. We have done it. Yeah. So we said we're going to... Put, provide 100% sewerage water supply uh, to all 160 towns, small or big, you've done it. But yet there must be, you know, the mood is such that right now in the... the people, what happens is people, you give them, uh, if somebody wants one chocolate, hmm. you give him one, he wants another one, if you don't give him, again he's angry. So, yeah, so it's, it's like never ending. People want more, more, more. And if you, if you give them little, then they'll only require little more. If you give them too much, then they don't appreciate it that much. So you feel you're not being appreciated? Not appreciated. I think people will appreciate. Last time also we won on development agenda. Hmm. And uh, that is why we repeated. This time again, we had, our agenda is development. Okay, one last question. If you were not in politics, both of you, what would you be doing? You first. Me? Holiday. Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but something else, some other profession? No, our family business. Which is? Badals are into so much. No, we are into transport, we are into agriculture. I can't see you driving a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Have you driven a truck? No, no, no. We are into buses. Into buses. What about you? What would you be doing? I'd be a homemaker, squabbling with him that why is he come home late? Hmm. And when is he that taking me out changed. for the next holiday? <laughs> and just the usual thing that everybody else does. So what is the one thing that you would like to change about him and the one thing as a politician? And the one thing that I you think like. um, on one side I tell him he needs to you know be in Punjab and work more but on the other side when it comes to um, you know a family equation I, I keep fighting with him why doesn't he spend more time at home more time with the kids but um, he's very keen on holidays he's always ready to go for a holiday it's me who like my father in law tells me how, how can you again go there's so much one and I start telling him no I don't think we can go so he's a family man as well as uh, he knows how to work hard but he knows how to 
um, also make a family life and mm. I probably can't make up my mind whether I want just the family life or I want him to be working hard so I'm always oscillating between the two. Okay, last word to you. What would you change about her? What is something that you don't like? As her, a temper. Her, her, her temper. <laughs> <laughs> so before she gets to react to that, I'm going to end now. Thank you for watching this show. We'll see you again same time next week.